So this is Dr. Tasha Rogers. Honey, we are about to get into it. You know, I get so many um, questions about what, I'm gonna explain what I think is happening. Um, a lot of women always come to me and they're like, you know, I keep testing negative for vaginitis. I don't have a UTI, but like I'm fishy. I'm fishy. Something is wrong. People tell me I smell. People treat me like I smell. I walk in, people start grabbing their nose. My breath even stinks. And I actually had a patient to reach out to me with this from another state. And the difficulty is she could not explain what her smell was, but a lot of women can't. And did you guys know, and this is no cap, did you guys know that there is a disorder called fishy odor syndrome? There is. It is a rare disorder, so I'm not one to run and quickly be like, oh, you got fishy odor syndrome. No, because you might have vaginitis. You might have trick. You might have a UTI. You might just have some panties that need to be cleaned with cleaning cute. But nevertheless, um, there are people out there with fishy odor syndrome. Unfortunately, a lot of providers don't know about this. So it may be a situation where you have to do your own research and take it to your doctor. Like, look, this is what I think I have. Um and work with your provider, but I'm gonna break it down. When I say down, down, I'm going to break it down. Now, this is very scientific, y'all. No, I don't like to do stuff like that because it loses people, it intimidates people, and I want y'all to get this good, good message. So I'm gonna make it as like layman's terms, and I'm gonna make it as easy to understand as possible. If you have to go back and listen to this a couple of times, do what you gotta do. If you gotta forward it to your provider, and if you need to forward this video to somebody who you like, oh, maybe that's her problem. But don't be offensive, y'all, because this is a lot. And with this syndrome, you know, one of the biggest things is it affects people's, it causes depression, it causes people to isolate socially. They don't want to go out because they can't find the problem, which means they can't fix the problem. Um, and who wants to go out where people are looking at you, where you smell funny and all the things. So give people grace if you like, mm, she's stay stank and she always... Don't assume that is something that the person either knows or that is something that they correct can correct. So give people grace. And if you're going to forward it to somebody, please forward it, this video in love um, and just say, hey, listen, I know you struggle a lot and I know you always have a lot of complaints and issues, but why don't you put this across to your doctor and see if this is something that you might be affected with, okay? So if you guys are going to share this, which I hope you do, if necessary, please make sure you're sharing in love um, and not being um, mean and convicting people because that's, that's, that's not why I do these things. I do these things to educate educate you guys um, and, and give you answers um, to where your general practitioner or your OBGYN may not have these answers, okay? So let's get it started. So fishy odor syndrome, it actually has a scientific name. Now the name probably won't mean a whole lot to you, but I'm going to drop the name in the comment so that you can give this information again to your providers. Um, so all that will be in the comments, but it's called, to break it down, try methyl aminuria so trimethyl aminuria um and basically what happens with this and this is very it's a very rare disorder it's actually genetic um and what happens with this disorder it happens mostly in women or now we say people who were assigned female at birth yeah um i don't want to offend anybody and i don't want to leave anybody out so there we go um, and so that is mostly who it is going to affect. So the way that this actually does work is it's your, there's an enzyme in your body called TMA or trimethylamine. Okay. That's where the trimethylaminuria comes from, but it's called trimethylamine. Okay. Or TMA for short, your body produces this and it smells fishy is fish. It's fishy. It's fish, she says. And it's supposed to be on a seesaw with another enzyme called FM03. And they're supposed to play on a fish, a seesaw. So when your body produces TMA, FM03 is supposed to come in and break it down. And then that's supposed to kill the odor. Well, if you do have this fishy odor syndrome, the way your body is working is you're producing the TMA, but your body is not producing the FMNO3 to break down the TMA. And that's why we're getting the fishy odor. Bam! Does it make sense? Now, it is not just going to be a vaginal fishy odor. It's going to be in your urine, your sweat. It's going to be on your breath. 
is going to emanate from your body. So when people say, I don't know, it just seems like it's coming out of my pores. It may not be your imagination, sis. It may not be um, your imagination. Okay. So we say, well, you know, what, what why what what so again genetically you're not producing that enzyme to break down the tma okay it's nothing you did wrong it just is what it is all right and that's why you smell fishy now let's talk a little bit more we think and there's a strong there's strong evidence to think that it is related to estrogen and progesterone or your hormone levels because what we see in fishy odor syndrome is it gets worse with puberty it's worse with your period. It is. It starts to increase and it gets worse if you worse if you take birth control pills, and sometimes then it get even worse in, in menopause. So we think that it's hormonally regulated and mediated because these times when your hormones are the highest, and yes, you like menopause. My hormones aren't high. Some of them are high in menopause. Your FSH shoots through the roof in menopause. You don't know what that means. You don't need to know what it means. It's not important for this but we get some hormone levels that are elevated in menopause, okay? So that answers that question. Um, it can also be affected by stress in your diet. Now, the most daunting part about fishy odor syndrome is there's no cure, but there are strategies that we can implement to drop that TMA in your body, okay? So there are strategies. So let's get with some of those strategies. How about that? Because this is what y'all really want to know. So first and foremost, you're going to avoid certain foods. You ready? Okay. We're going to avoid milk. We're going to avoid eggs. We're going to avoid liver. We're going to avoid kidney. I don't know who out here eating kidneys, like cow kidneys or whatever kind of kidneys y'all may be eating. I listen. I don't judge. But just stay away from if you got fishy odor syndrome, okay? Um, peas, beans, peanuts, soy. Um, and then there are a certain group of vegetables, and I'm sure y'all probably know what they are. You got the cauliflowers, you got the cabbage, cause chow, um, you got the broccoli, and you got the Brussels sprouts. So them right there, you cis with this particular syndrome, ignore that, okay? You don't want any of those. And then also, most importantly, you want to avoid seafood, cause yes, the women who are like after now. Let me talk about this because every person who smells fishy the day after they eat a little bit of fish, a little shellfish. You don't have fishy odor syndrome. That is normal, okay? Um, it usually goes away within a day or so. That is normal. Um, but for women who consistently have this problem, please, please avoid seafood um, as well, okay? Some other things that we're going to do, and I hope y'all got a pen because, again, your general practitioner will likely have never heard of this and they won't know how to treat it. So you're going to have to walk in like, this is what I'm going to need. I'm going to need you to manage this thing for me, blah, blah, blah. And then also, too, guys, please don't be afraid to get with a mental health person because this is heavy. It is heavy. It is an emotional burden. Um, it is a lot and it will test your constitution. It will test you. Okay. And so it's okay to get on somebody's couch to say, Hey, listen, I have this disorder. I can control it, but you know, I can't cure it. And this has caused me a lot of problems and deal with the trauma that this has caused you. Cause if this is you with this disorder and you're today years old learning about it, it's caused you some trauma, sis. I, it's no way it can't. Okay, so let's talk about what we can do. Again, there's no cure, but there's stuff that we can do, sis, and we're going to do them all, okay? So the first thing, and this is why I really kind of want you guys to get with your provider, your physician, to kind of pull all this together, all right? The first thing is taking low-dose antibiotics, all right? And I looked up the antibiotics, and it's three antibiotics, but two of them, if you're doing it long-term, it doesn't recommend long-term, and then if you're doing it long-term, it can be toxic to your ears and your kidney. Baby, we're not changing one problem for the next. So the one antibiotic that is said that you can do low-dose is um, amoxicillin. Now, you're not going to do it consistently. You're not going to do it every day, and y'all know penicillins are hell with causing yeast infections, and I think I'm going to give you a natural remedy for that, um, but rock with me. So, um, it would be amoxicillin. That's probably the one that's going to be not toxic to any body parts, um, not toxic to any organs, and you can do it long term. We don't want to do too much of it because we don't want you to become resistant to it. Um, so what I would recommend for my patients, if you come in and I find that you really do have fishy odor syndrome, it's going to be one week a month. I don't know. Make it easy for yourself. Make it the week you're on your period. I don't really know. But I would say one week a month. 
you know, twice a day, one week a month, and then we're done with it as far as the low dose antibiotics are concerned, okay? Um, if you don't want to be like, oh, I'm on antibi I'm on amoxicillin, now I got to take diflucan. Yes, you can take the diflucan. I recommend taking the diflucan, but if not, and that's not where you want to be, I am a lover and an advocate of apple cider vinegar capsules, not gummies. It's too much sugar. You're just going to cause the problem you're trying to fix. But apple cider vinegar capsules, um, before we were not Amazoning, that's where I would send you to get them, but I'm sure you can get them at any health food store, um, you know, any particular store, maybe a Walgreens, I don't know, but um, it is apple cider vinegar capsules. Got it? And you can take one a day. That's going to eat up any overgrowth of yeast that you have in your body. Um, so don't wait until you have a yeast infection and think that they're supposed to treat the infection. It is not. It is something you would take on an everyday basis to control um, yeast infection. Um, or the possibility of developing a yeast infection. But if you do get one, don't be afraid to take Diflucan and Metronidazole cysts, okay? So there's that. The next thing I would recommend is colonics. Now, TMA is the fishy thing. It's actually produced in your gut. And I think that's why a lot of you all sometimes are bastardized into thinking that there's a vaginal probiotic because you take a probiotic, which probably helps the TMA in your gut, and then that decreases the fishy odor, which you thought was your vagina, um, and it may or may not have been. I might be cis, but it may or may not have been. Um, and so, but you know how I feel about vaginal probiotics. They don't exist, okay? Um, so probiotics or colonics are good to reduce the TMA. Get all that extra TMA, all that's packed up poop up out of there. It helps with toxicity and it also is going to help to reduce the TMA in the gut. Um, and so that is another thing that you can do. Another thing is taking activated charcoal. Please just don't ask me how much. I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about active uh, activated charcoal. I don't give it. Um, but again, it's something that I would get online, read about, learn about, and I'm sure they have it at health food stores, herbal stores where you can go in and get an activated charcoal. Um, supplement because that also is going to decrease the TMA, okay? And especially in the urine, that's where it decreases it, but it's just going to naturally decrease the TMA. It is not um, anything that is going to be um, toxic to your system or anything like that. So um, activated charcoal is a big one. Also using proper soaps. Now, I am not a self-serving, I'm not self-serving on here, but the soaps that you should be using should have a pH of 5.5 to 6.5. I can't speak of any other soap, but I know Clean and Cute Body Wash Bar has it, so get you some. But if you can't afford the Clean and Cute Body Wash Bar, you cannot do it. I would recommend Dove White Bar Soap. I'm not 100% certain of the pH of the Dove White Bar Soap. Never looked it up, but again, those are the only two soaps that I will ever, ever, ever recommend. But like I said, I know the pH of my soap. Run on over there to Clean and Cute. Um, clean and Cute, what is it? Clean and Cute dot shop um, and get you some, period. Um, and that's what I would recommend. Also, another supplement that you guys can take is the B2 supplement. Um, now, it's saying take a whole lot of this B2 supplement. That's too merch. It is too merch. I, listen, so... You know, it says 30 to 40 milligrams all these times a day. I'm going to say take a B2 supplement with each of your meals, okay? If you eat twice a day, take it twice a day. If you eat three times a day, take it three times a day. Yes, this is a bit of a commitment. Like, I'm on activated charcoal. I'm on, you know, antibiotics one week a month. You know, I'm on this. I'm doing it. You, you have an alternative. You can continue to do things the way that you're doing them. And you can continue to smell the way that you're smelling. At least we're not doping you up with a bunch of drugs. These are that you guys tend to, you know, not be here for. Um, at least it is supplements and things that are adding to your health and um, things that are decreasing bad stuff that's forming or not breaking down or however you want to cause it. So it's going to be a little bit of a commitment, but whenever you have any type of condition, you have to be committed to getting better and getting well. So yes, you have to change your diet.